Shalom, welcome to the Jewish View. My name is Rabbi Nachman Simon with the Chabad House of Delmar, and together with my co-host Mark Ronich, who's covering the Capitol for over 30 years. And someone else who's been at the Capitol for over 30 years, which is a rarity, yeah. is our guest today, Assemblyman Dov Hyken from Borough Park, Midwood. Midwood. And, uh, you know, thank you for uh, being uh, a return guest on the show. My Jewish pleasure. Day. My you pleasure. Know, to you must be here. doing something right because yeah, you no, came you, back. So. What are you, uh, you have the most seniority probably about, you're up there at the top Well, I, I, think, I think there are about five or six or seven people who have really? been there a little longer, but uh, 35 years is nice. Yeah, I know. You know, so. Uh, and you still must be doing something right. I represent right. a great community right. who, I appreciate them, and obviously they appreciate me. You know, I, I do the things that I do. I stand up for things that are important, uh, uh, even if they sometimes disagree. But I think there's a mutual, there's an understanding that I will stand up and speak out about things that they may agree or not agree. So, but thank God, Baruch Hashem. You know, it's I a great always, relationship. I always say there's a lot of, uh, thank God, a lot of Jewish assembly people in the assembly, but really you are the voice of the Jewish people and surely the Orthodox Jewish people. Well, one of my favorite of things has become the last two years, I don't, I don't know if you know, is on the yard site, uh, the birthday of the Lubavitcher Rebbe. For the past two years, I've had an opportunity to get up on the floor of the assembly and speak about the Rebbe and what he meant really? and my own personal relationship. So that's the last two years. I never did it really before, uh, but that's been a very special so thing for me. tell our audience what you say on the floor about your well, personal I, relationship with the Rebbe. I, I mean, I think, I think what stands out to me about the Rebbe, I mean, he was truly one of the greats, absolute greats, and no one has been able to replace him. That yeah, kind true. of stature. I think what was so special about him is the way he treated people. The story that I told on the floor, which I will never forget, my mother, who is not here for, the, for three years already, I remember walking on... Eastern Parkway, where Lubavitch is located, 770. I was a kid in Crown Heights, walking with my mother on Eastern Parkway. And the Rebbe was uh, walking towards 770. And, my, and the Rebbe came over to my mother to say good Shabbos. Really? That, that, is, that is exactly what happened. And my mother and I, I've never stopped talking about it. Be, he didn't wait for us to say good Shabbos to him. He, good Shabbos. So, you know, there's so many lessons. I mean, I had many opportunities to speak to him, uh, to, uh, you know, he was, he was in a class, the, mm -hmm. way, the, way, the way every Jew was treated by the Rebbe and therefore by Lubavitch to this day. You know, we live often in communities, everybody's judgmental. You know, this kind of Jew, that kind of Jew, and sometimes people think they're better than others. That's not the way Lubavitch is. Lubavitch treats everyone with respect. You can walk in with jeans. You could walk in with a Bekcher, a Hasidic outfit. doesn't matter. You're, you're a Jew. We treat you with respect. And not just a Jew, but he treated everyone the same way. That's something that may sound very simple. Like, what's the big deal? Shouldn't everyone treat people nicely? But this was the essence of the Rebbe and what he transmitted to his people that is still practiced today. And, and, you, yes. And what's interesting about the, the Jewish community is that there are some people who say, oh, the Lubavitch? No, those are those people. You know, I don't want, and Jews say this about, you know, those are those well, people. We that, don't, you know, I, I, they, they're sort of intimidated by the higher level of learning, of Jewish learning by the Lubavitch, that they feel inadequate to be amongst their group. Well, no one should feel that way. And if you travel anywhere in the world, I mean anywhere in the world, in Africa, Asia, you name it, and you're looking for kosher food, or even if you're not kosher, but you're looking for to be with the Jewish people for the Sabbath or something, the all over the world, mm -hmm. All over the world you can go and you'll be welcomed in. They won't ask you questions. And they won't ask for well, is that a, Exactly. Yeah. Is, that, is that amazing? Yes. No, and it's, it's absolutely astounding. It's unique, yeah. And I've had and that experience where, you know, wherever I go, I will always look up uh, right. Chabad House right. and, uh, and gravitate towards there. You go to Paris, Paris, you want to look at uh, visit sites. Yeah. 
one of those things is Lubavitch. Uh, you know, and I've done that go traveling throughout Europe and other parts of the world. You know, if Chabad is there, you know it's going to add to your trip. Right, and I'd rather stay with a Chabad family than stay in a hotel because it's family. It's right. so much richer. Well, that's the special relationship yeah. between the Jewish people, right? right? Yeah, that we have a connection and, you know, a fellow Jew, it doesn't matter. I don't know you. I've never met you before. But we're part of the same team. We're part of the same family. That's so, it. That's beautiful. <coughs> so, I, that's the way it is. I would like for you to give our audience an update as to what happened on Ocean Parkway, because what they, what they had to do, just for clarification, is that they, the New York City and New York State <coughs> DOT said that the service roads had to be used for right-hand turns. That's right. And, uh, and that would clog up oil delivery trucks, uh, emergency, hot solo, uh, hot so uh, emergency, emergency vehicles, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like getting through. And also, when they were there first, these trucks and the emergency vehicles, People couldn't, the, the regular cars couldn't get through. Right, right. So, and, they, and the city said this was because they wanted to cut <coughs> on, on the number of uh, deaths or, uh, or injuries. It was actually the state. The okay. city actually supported my position okay. to look further, to study further. The city was with us. The mayor, uh, Polly Trottenberg, the commissioner of the transportation, was with us. This was uh, the, the governor of the state of New York and the State Department of Transportation. They knew better than anyone living in the neighborhood forever on Ocean Parkway what was good for us. They knew better. They, you know, in their places in Albany, sitting, you know, whoever sits and makes these plans, they made these changes in our community that have made life more difficult. They instituted the changes. We try to fight them. And I'm not done fighting them. But let me tell you the result of everything yeah. they did. They said it was about accidents. Yeah. <laughs> and they gave us the statistics, which were not very impressive. But in one of these locations, in, in a period of three months, there have been 27 accidents in one location. More than anything that they were talking about over years. Now, it's like talking to the wall. It, to me, it's government at its worst. Really, it, it's just like, they know better, we don't have to listen, we're not interested, and that's it. And that's honest, that's a tragedy. And I was down in, as you know, down in Ocean Parkway when you had your rally. Right. And I was so thrilled to actually to see so many people coming out. I was afraid you'd be standing on one of the park benches there with a bullhorn by yourself. Well, but, Mark, but we, we are planning yeah. another one that will be much, much, much bigger. There is no one in our community, and it's not just Ocean Parkway, so, people far and wide, no one, no one. You know, sometimes you make changes, maybe we were wrong, look how much better it is, yeah. it has improved things. I don't think you'll find anyone who thinks that this has made things better, it's made things worse. So what happens uh, if someone makes a right turn from the main Forget road? It, you, get, you get a ticket, a moving violation. But if that's only if there's a cop there to find you or uh, there right. are there cameras? No, no, no cameras, thank God, okay. yet. But uh, yeah, you get a violation. And what was the and, and what was the corner? Was it Avenue J? It's J P King's Highway or some of them the, Avenue C. No, I that mean they that changed the, yeah. the right turns. But I mean that had the elevated accidents. Yeah, which uh, J, J J. Some That's of the others too, but J in particular. Okay. So you know, it, it just has made life so much more difficult for people. Also on the service roads. Yeah. People tell me all the time. It used to take me ten minutes <laughs> to go from here to here. Now it's 25 minutes, yeah. a common refrain from people. So to me, this is like, it's sad. Starting with the governor, really, just not listening. You know when they're gonna listen? Next year, election time. That's when they're gonna listen, just wait and watch. That's when they're gonna listen. Now they didn't have to listen, they could get away with it. Hmm. So, so you're going to have another uh, rally? Yeah, okay. uh, we're, we're working on it for some time in June. In June. To bring out a lot of people again. You know, we're not doing this because I have nothing else to do with my life. Right. It doesn't make sense. It's made things worse, more difficult, more complicated. Is that what government is all about, to make our life more difficult, more complicated? You know, I just read, a, you know, you have state troopers now all over New York City. You know, yeah. lately, yeah. I don't know what that's all about, but I'm not quite sure what the plan over there is. 
but it's resulted in thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of tickets, violations being uh -huh. given to people uh -huh. all over the place. Uh -huh. I, I was like, well, like the New York City Police Department can enforce the law. We need state troopers. I love state troopers, by the way. Well, it just but, adds to what the New York City Police Department does. It's an extra but resource. Believe me, the city of New York did not ask the state, Oi, police, we need help. You don't think so? I know not. You know? I know you, not. Okay. It, it is a fact. No one asked, <laughs> you know, with the relationship between the Blasio and the, and the governor, I don't think we could even imagine de Blasio asking the governor. But no, the, it, nobody asked for any additional resources. Mm -hmm. This is purely the state. I don't know the motivation. I don't think anyone can find out. You know? Right, right, right. I don't think you'll be able to find out as a reporter. Right, right. Go ask. Go ask a question. See if you get an answer. So I was coming down Ocean Parkway from Prospect Expressway onto Ocean Parkway, and the second street, there's a camera. Yeah, that, right. There are some cameras there. That gets you. Oh, yes. As, and they, they don't tell you that you're going from a 45 on, on Prospect Expressway to down a to 25. 25, right. You th I thought Which it was also 30. makes no sense. And I thought it was a 30. It used to be 30. It used to they, be, uh, right? Lowered. And for me, coming out from, oh, from Albany, I'm thinking you, 30. You, so I set my cruise control on 33 or 34 right, right. or whatever, and I got the ticket. Really? And okay. I, t I told them what happened in an appeal, and it was like, they didn't care. This is it. No, they, they didn't, didn't care. care. And it was the judge who didn't care. Right. The right. judge wrote back and right. cited something that wasn't even true. But right, I, right. but you don't go back. I mean, right. you know, you got the appeal process. One lies, the other one swears by it. Right. You know, so you got look, a, uh, it's a problem. Look, uh, but Bob Carroll's district, the Robert Carroll, the new guy, is it's his district. So I know I'm that. waiting to get I, him on the show. I, I know. To get him well, to, he, to do something. He for was me. he was there at the community <laughs> board meeting. He was yeah. there. Uh -huh. He hadn't. He wasn't even in office yet when right. we were doing this. And he heard the way people felt. In fact, that community board, Community Board 12, voted unanimously, 50 to nothing, asking the state, hold off, don't rush, give, give it more time. That's what the mayor asked. Mm -hmm. Just hold off, let's take a closer look, because they had concerns, but you know, they were deaf and dumb. Okay, so now I want to switch topics for a minute. Sure. Uh, kosher and halal food in New York City schools, do you support that? That's a David Weprin bill? I, I know. I, it's I, a one-house bill this year. Last year they had it. Can, can I tell you, I can't say that I am against it. I'm not going to say something right. like that. Uh, Just explain, because I really don't know what it means that they're offering kosher lunches well, what, to I schools. think what they're offering is that, the, you know, they offer lunches. But if you're and an Orthodox Jew, or if you're... But they have a vegetarian option, which they're saying right, right. The, the Jews and the Muslims You could take advantage, yeah. yeah. So, I, I, you know, I'm not going to say I'm against it. Is this like a priority for me? No. Okay. Because there is another option, as you pointed out. Yeah. Well, it is like, have it is have like you have to starve. Yeah, but you yeah, be a mashkiach. What are they going to have? A no, coach's package, supermarket? like air, airline. Oh, airline. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but uh, look, I, I'm not going to be against it. You know? if, if, if the state of New York wants to do it, well, do it. It would be the city of New York, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. But I'm saying we have to pass the legislation oh, to tell you? them what oh, to do. Right. Yeah, yeah, you do. Yeah. That's right. Exactly. So mayoral control of New York City schools, do you support that? Absolutely, of course. Yes. You do. Why? Yeah. Because I think someone should be responsible. For a long, long time, when it came to the, uh, uh, you know, the uh, public schools, the, the governor was not really ultimately responsible. The city didn't really, the mayor didn't have the power. He didn't give someone the right. power, as we've done in this case of the city of New York, to the mayor, give it to him. And then you know who's why responsible. Do you have to, exactly. Why do you have to come back every year and play this game? You know, let the mayor, it, you know, if no one is in charge, then no one is to blame. That's right. And that's how it works. And that so would be course. the school, all these school board, exactly. the community yeah, boards, yeah, school board, right. yeah, So absolutely. I wanted to ask you, uh, you mentioned over the past couple of years you carried this resolution about the Rebbe's sure. birthday. But have you also noticed a, a scene, in the enthusiasm dwindle about regarding Jewish functions at the Capitol over the past couple of years? I mean, Tu B'Shvat, Rebbe's uh, birthday celebration, uh, commemoration. Uh, you know, a, a, an Israeli official of some sort would come to the Capitol. I mean, when Purim would fall out on a Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, sometimes there'd be a little Megillah reading. Right. Would, you know, what, what, Things have changed. Yeah. And, but Look, so you've noticed that also. Oh, of course. Okay. I talk about it all the time. Oh, tell, talk you, about it. You know, I don't know how much I want to talk about it, oh. because I think there's been, 
Look, you, you, there are a lot of people, not good, bad, or anything, no, not, no judgment, right. but, but it's a different world. You have many more minorities, so-called progr liberal progressives. I thought I was liberal, and I thought mm -hmm. I was progressive. But uh, huge change. If you look at the makeup of the body 10 years ago, 15 years ago, and Shelley Silver had a lot to do with it as well. You know, Shelley never played the religious card, but he respected it 100%. So things have really changed. I mean, I've noticed that it's so obvious to me on a personal level, even when it comes to many issues. I'm gonna give you an example, Please. okay, that's really striking. All over the country, different state legislatures are passing anti-BDS legislation with the Democrats and Republicans together, not Republicans. Together, in New York, we nothing's happened in the assembly, and nothing is going to happen. But that do you know fun. why? You know the answer, because things have changed. But we had that more than two years. We ago, had a resolution, issue. right? I'm talking about BDS legislation. Yes, but wasn't there? You have it all over carries, the country who now. Who carries mm. that? Who carries that BDS anti-BDS legislation? It, well, the resolution. The, that's different. Yeah. Nobody, right now, but nobody. But there's no legislation even. There were some bills. Okay. Levine had a bill. I didn't want to be the one to actually carry it for obvious reasons. I'd rather have someone who's more in the middle and so on and so forth. But when we did the resolution, and it passed overwhelmingly, yeah. one person spoke against it, Barron. Yeah. I, I got up there and spoke for little. I, I think I spoke twice. Yeah. It was a real education for a lot of people. We did a resolution, but we can't in New York. Can you imagine the commentary on that? We can't pass legislation so, in New York. But uh, not the Senate, the Assembly. But also the There's no bill. The OU and Teach NYS and the uh, Gudas Israel, they don't make it part of their legislative agenda. No. And that would be That's the, unfortunate. where it would germinate they, from too. Look, they're interested most of all and how much money they can get for their institutions. I'm not criticizing. No, no, no. We're I'm not being objective. But that is the truth. We're stating what That is mean. the truth. Why isn't BDS part of it? I don't know. All That's over the country. All over the country. And I've looked at the numbers with Democrats and Republicans. Democrats supported overwhelmingly anti-BDS legislation. And in New York, of all places, no. so tell me something is... Mm, yeah, it's not a miss. You see the shift. Yeah, yeah the shift. and there are fewer Jewish elected oh, officials in the assembly, of course, than ever before. Absolutely. You know, I, I see. No one has even made a point of that. I have. First of all, I have. Yeah, 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 well, okay, okay. I I'd have missed that column, but okay. but that is so obvious. Look, look in Brooklyn alone. Some of the people, uh, Procras that left, Rhoda Jacobs that left. That's right. I mean, Rhoda Jacobs represented a, a totally minority district, and right. she was reelected all the time. Right. But you know what, I always tell people, I, as an elected official, I serve everybody equally. Jew, non-Jew, Muslim, it doesn't matter. Right. When it comes to helping somebody, we will go to bat for every single person. But I am a proud Jew. And the blacks in the legislature are proud of who they are. Mm -hmm. Jews are more hesitant to say, oh, we're proud Jews, you know, I'm a Jew. Everybody else doesn't have that problem. If you're Latino, mm -hmm. you're proud of who you are. Okay, so here's my point also. You have the Black Puerto Rican Asian Caucus. You have the Somos. You have the Women's Caucus. You have all these other groups that have right. their own. And we have the uh, 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 Jewish Legislators Association, which is part of a national group, it does nothing. And even on your website, you don't put down that you're a member of the Jewish right, Legislators right, Association. Because I don't want to say this because, I mean, Levine is a good friend of mine, but. I mean, uh, before him, Mark Weprin. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't, it's not. Uh, I'll give you an example. Linda Sarsour was invited okay. to give the commencement yeah. exercise on June 1st at CUNY. Right. Okay, it's the, you know, freedom of speech, 100%. You invite Linda Sasser to speak at your college, let her speak. I may criticize, I may demonstrate, but she has a right to speak. But this is an official function. And when you invite someone like that, someone who has, I mean, just to give you some examples about Linda Sasser, Yeah. she's infamous for the picture of a three-year-old child with rocks. You can go look, this is all her tweets with her comments. She shows a picture of a three-year-old child. 
rocks in his hand, directing it towards Israeli soldiers. We have made a big deal about the fact that babies have been murdered in cars in Israel because of rocks that are thrown. Linda Sassur on her website shows this picture and talks about this picture as an example of courage. You hear this? This is courage, throwing rocks. How about stabbing people? Is that courage too, from her perspective? April 2nd of this year, not last year, five years ago, April 2nd, she's on stage, Linda Saussure is on stage with Rosemia Oda in Chicago. Who's Rosemia Oda? Rosemia Oda planted a bomb in Jerusalem that killed two young students, 20 and 21 years old, in 1979. She was sentenced to life in prison, got out on a prisoner exchange, got into this country by, not, by lying on her documents. Now she's being deported to Jordan. Linda Sassur is on stage with her on April 2nd, saying in her words, talking about this is her heroine, how proud she is to be on stage with this person. Linda Sassur, you know, the women's group, she was involved in the big rally with the women. Linda Sassur has said three weeks ago, four weeks ago, you can't be, if you are a supporter of Israel, you can't be a feminist. Chutzpah, audacity. You can't be a feminist if you support Israel. And the goes on and on. She's, she has expressed support for, for a guy, another person, Mohammed Alan, who it w was charged in Israel with recruiting suicide bombers. Everything I'm telling you is all her own tweets, her own words, and it goes on and on. And Some of it I can't even mention on this TV show. The way she talked about women's private parts of two women, two women who she disagrees with how she spoke about them. This is a liberal progressive? This is civil rights? The list goes on and on with the intifada and so on and so forth. She is a dangerous, dangerous person. Okay. And who she, is Linda Sassur for our audience? She is a... Is she running for office? No, she's an activist who how did was brought into the White House by Obama 10 times. Okay. She has managed over the past two years to get away, to be made kosher, because she's very smart and she's befriended a lot of people, many of them, by the way, who were not aware of the things that I'm telling you tonight. Mm -hmm. And it's all out there, the public record. I'm not adding one iota now. You don't one. have to. Yeah, exactly. So this is a woman who's invited. But, <coughs> but what's her claim to fame? I mean, what is. She's an activist woman. She's gotten a lot of attention, national attention. For being involved, by the way, she was the one she who raised for funds for the cemetery, for the Jewish cemetery yeah. in St. Louis. Yeah. Hip hip hooray! She preaches hatred towards Israel. She hates Israel, hates BDS. Forget about it. She's like a leading supporter of BDS. Uh -huh. The list goes on and on. Now, with women being in the Israeli army, why is why is it that you can't be a feminist if you support Israel? No, but I'm saying forget I mean, about the it, army. Because, no, because I'm just if saying my that, wife. My okay. wife is a feminist. Whatever you want to interpret that, you, I'm sure your wife is a feminist. Feminist is a per, right. you know you can interpret it in many different ways. Right. Now, you know, so my wife loves Israel. So. Linda Sassur is telling my wife and your wife and all of us, I mean, you're Lubavitch, you love Israel, you can't love Israel, and it, 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 I mean, it's crazy. But mm -hmm. let me tell you the worst part, the hypocrisy that goes on. You know, if, if anything is done by Trump or some of his people, all the liberals, progressives, they're condemning it, they're yelling, they're screaming, you have Linda Sassur and you're not doing anything. You're a hypocrite if you sit by silently. I would ask anyone who supports her to, to show those tweets of hers and some of the things I've mentioned here, and I've only mentioned a few. Oh, right. Uh, it's only a half hour how, show. How can, you, how can you support her? Just explain to me. You support violence? Are you for violence? How do you explain the things I've told you? But is she famous for being famous? I mean, what? I mean, yes. she's, aside she, from being, there are a lot of activists who don't. Well, you know, up you know with the election so. of Trump in particular, 
being that she's Palestinian, Muslim Palestinian, okay. she's gotten a lot of attention as oh. someone standing up. So she, you know, the media, exactly. So the media, I don't have to tell you, is right. basically very liberal. Mm -hmm. And that's a perfect figure. She wears a hajib. She yeah. does that whole routine. Right. Comes across like a nice person. Mm -hmm. But she is dangerous. Uh -huh, okay. She associates, praises terrorists. Okay. So you mentioned Israel a few times. Uh, we know the president, uh, Donald Trump, is going to Israel, amongst also Saudi Arabia and Italy. Um, so he says this is the first time a pre sitting president has gone to a Muslim, Jewish, and Catholic country. So, you know, what, what's the problem with him in Israel? You said that there was... Well, I don't have... Look, no, no, I, is there a problem I, look, with his look, trip to Israel? I, I have said all along about Trump. I'm happy Trump won. What are you hoping I, that uh, Trump the, will... Oh, I'll give you one example, one of the things that, that just came out publicly, yeah. that if that ends up being the case, and this came out from his top, from someone in the administration, okay, saying that he will go to the Kotel, he will go to the Western Wall, yeah. but... He will not go with the Prime Minister of Israel. Whoa, what? Why? Did anyone say why? No. No explanation. Okay. And remember, this is Trump. Mm -hmm. Trump has no rules. He does whatever he wants, says whatever he wants. I mean, it's a little right. scary, some of the things with Trump. Let's be honest. Mm -hmm. It's scary. So he's going to Israel. He's going to go to the Kotel. But he will not let the prime minister accompany him in Jerusalem? I, I don't get it. Well, did someone say something that the Western Wall is not part of Jerusalem? Did That's you, another thing. Well, yeah, talked about that. Right? Yeah, that, that was what, horrible. What, what, who a said senior that? aide. Yeah. These are not uh, just anybody. Right, right. This is a senior aide to Trump. Right. Made a comment when they were discussing the uh, trip, you know, the Israelis and the Americans. Made a comment saying that the Western Wall is part of the West Bank. Oh, he just didn't know? Maybe? You know is what? It ignorance? You know, I'm tired of ignorance <laughs> okay. in this administration. Okay. You know, you want to be president, you are president, you have people who work for you. I'm tired of excuses I didn't know. <laughs> Sometimes that is okay, but it can't be on and on and on. Like the comments by Spicer with the Holocaust, right? I mean, you can't, you can't be ignorant all the time. But that's why they say it's amateur hour up there. That's why it, they... It sure looks that way. Yeah. And it's scary, yeah. to be very honest with yeah. you. It's scary. You know, suddenly, you know, uh, uh, Trump, uh, you know, is going to make peace. Uh -huh. uh, all kinds of deals on the table. Suddenly, right, he's going to make peace. Well, he's it's a joke. He's put but, Jared Kushner in charge, his son-in-law no, in charge I, of I, making I, peace. I, I, look, I, I, I don't want to laugh uh, at, you know, that whole thing. The whole, you know, look, we're all watching. I'm happy that Hillary Clinton is not president. Right. But Trump being president scares me as well. I'm being honest. It's scary, scary, scary. It's dangerous. And, you know, and I didn't want Hillary, and I didn't vote for Hillary. And that was different. And by the way, I didn't vote for Trump either. But you, but you sound... I voted for Ryan. I just put his name uh, in. But you sound different now, differently now, in your opinion, than when you were in the synagogue uh, that I went to Ocean really. Avenue. Not really. You I, had that I, debate, you know, that... Uh, I always wanted Trump. If it was a choice between Trump and Hillary Clinton, you know, hold my nose, let him win. Of course. I, I don't want the Democrats... And the progressives and Sanders and all, and Ellison and all the, you want to talk about the Jewish community, there's so much to talk about. You want to know how much we're in trouble? Yeah. When you have a United States senator from New York, the Shomer Yisrael, Schumer, supporting Ellison to be the head of the D National Democratic Party. You know you're in trouble. How do you excuse that? It's called mm -hmm. selling out. Mm -hmm. I'm saying it openly. Mm -hmm. It's called selling out. Ellison, Tr uh, Schumer, Schumer Yisrael supports Ellison with his record? How do you explain that? And how many people spoke out about that? How many people? Because nobody wants to rock the boat. But I've asked Schumer. Nobody nobody's I, gonna, wants to rock the boat. I personally asked Schumer about that, and, and he won't answer. He won't talk about it. Yeah, I wonder why. Why yeah. wouldn't he talk to you? Because it's New York. Because he's uncomfortable. That's right. Look, he got elected last year. If he was running this year, yeah, he wouldn't have done it. Right.
Right, it's all about the cycle. Oh, yeah. absolutely. It's pretty sad. Yeah. So uh, you're going to be running, uh, you know, you don't see retirement in your future, I hope. As long as I can continue playing paddle ball against people 25 years younger, okay. I'm going to continue running. Okay, wonderful. I really look forward to that. No, that you are a blessing in, in the assembly. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, I admire you. Thank you. you know, I and, it. and everything that you've look, been I'm able very, to do. I'm very with. frustrated, to be very yeah. honest, because yeah. I see what's going on, and it really is scary. But you know, with all of this, you don't, you, you, you don't sit on any committees. You have a leadership position, though. Right, right, right. right. What was your, what's your leadership Deputy position? Deputy Majority Leader. Deputy Majority Leader. So does that make you number three or four? Yeah, right. In that yeah. range, okay? Right. And that's, and then, and all your, your entire uh, focus is constituent oh, relations. Oh, yeah. Now, look, can I tell you? And you don't get it, The reason I, I'm in office so long is not all the public things on TV and all that. It's helping people every single day right. in my office. I think we run one of the most effective offices anywhere. By the way, we, I'm told this by the speaker that I, I may have the first or second largest uh, allocation for staff in the entire assembly. Really? Yeah, you could check that. But, so, but we really, we, <laughs> Mark, we, 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 <laughs> we, we, we are there. No, we're seriously, we, I, I take great pride and I take it very seriously, helping people. And we do Kanai Nahara. I'm talking about my staff. Yeah. I do my part. We really help people. And, and you just don't hold office mm -hmm. hours. You meet with people in your home. I mean, oh. you're 24. 20. That's so true. How do you know that? How, how do I know that? Yeah. I know these things. He's yeah, yeah, I have a camera outside Look, your house. Let me see this. If someone no. calls me, <laughs> if someone calls me at 11 o'clock at night, they got my cell phone to somebody. Right. Yeah. I don't mind if it's important. Right. Right. If they could have done it at 9 o'clock in the morning, I tell them, how come you waited till 11 o'clock right. at night? No, no. But if but it's if an it's emergency, a, yeah. I will get out of my bed, right. I, will get, I will dress, I will go, I will mm -hmm. do, yeah. I won't even hesitate. That's just the way I do things. And all you my have life. in the past. All my life. I do it all the time. You, I, you, you I do that all the time, even that. now. I mean, I do it all the right. time. Right. And you're how old? Do you know? 29. 66. 66. All right. well, to be you're 29, young you have a, a youthful yeah. 29. Listen, if somebody goes, right. can I say it all the time every year? We get a report card from you. But I just want to say that you are the, really the voice, not only in the assembly, surely in the assembly, but really in New York City. Right. Yeah. You are the voice of the Jewish community. I'm not happy Arts. about that because I wish there were more people who stood up so it wouldn't be Dove Hyken. It would be Dove Hyken and this one and that one and the other one. But yeah, and you, you know, know what I'm saying? I mean that. Like, I, I, I know who I am. But you know what gets me is that, and I, and I mean this respectfully, but Simcha Felder doesn't do things if it has a Jewish bent to it. I mean, he worked for you, from my understanding. He was my chief of staff chief for of staff. over 10 years. But he has tends to. He first I, got elected I've been told, from my office. I've been told that he shies away from being the Jewish senator. Well, you know, and, and he sits, he does his thing, he I'm does proud it quietly. To be the Jew. You know. All right. Well, <laughs> good, good work. Keep it going. Thank, Thank you so much. Be well. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Be well.